Hi, everyone. It's Paul Miller, the Free Time Free Spill Podcast. And we're going to talk about clutter today we, with a professional organizer. Her name is Star. How you doing, Star? Hey, Paul. I'm doing great. How are you? Doing great. Like, How's the weather? Oh, my gosh. It, gorgeous compared to most of the country right now. I feel like everyone is in our... I'm cold and it's 50 degrees, so we're doing okay. We're, we're okay. Are you holding up? Yes. Yeah, it was 16 earlier this morning, like 16 degrees. That's not okay. That's like an, a teenage age, not of temperature. It should not be that. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's beyond freezing temperatures, like with the water pipes and like freezing and, you know, not having water. I think it's hard, especially places that they're not meant, f they're not used to that degree of cold. Like I yeah. know in Arizona, we had a big cold snap a few years ago and man, I mean, everybody's pipes burst because they just weren't, I think they were like the PVC pipe. So everybody froze and then they all burst and it was just insane for weeks at a time. Wow. That sounds like a lot of stress. So stressful. <laughs> yeah. We made it though. It's, I mean, humans are resilient If nothing else. We like a good story. We like to know we survived something like we, and, and you know, when you look at it, compared to what a lot of people are dealing with or what we could be dealing with. It's like, we can process this. It's okay. You know, it's, I always try to think of how could I, how can I help somebody else who's going through something worse? Like, how can I show up for that? Because it's so, yeah, you know, somebody's always walking a harder path and how can we help them? You know? Yeah. We're, we're diamonds in the rough. Like we're just stronger. It makes us stronger. Everything. Yeah. I feel like every challenge I've ever had has always I look back and I say, thank you for it. You know, even, even something as drastic as losing someone, you know, like having, like having someone pass away before you're ready for them to, ha to pass. I feel like even that is, is so, you know, we look back and it's, it's our choice, how we see it, what we do with it. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited, I'm excited to talk to you about like organizational skills. Yes. I love it. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm the clutter whisperer. So it's, I'm all about organizing and figuring out what your clutter means and the deeper kind of the root of the clutter because it's one thing if we take all your clutter and your disorganization and we put it into a pretty box and put a label on it it's it feels good for a minute but then you have to keep living your life and so what we want to look at is what's causing the clutter because i promise you for any anyone who has clutter if you no one has everything is disorganized in their home right there's somewhere that you maintain organization, somewhere that you value and you're like, that will never get messed up. And so how do we create that same kind of fierceness around the areas that feel cluttered right now? And, and that starts with figuring out, well, why is the clutter there helping you? Yeah. As I'm looking at my room, like I gotta, I gotta fix my bed. I got clothes on the floor. Cause I got too much clothes. Like yeah. yeah, it's interesting. And well, you know, so every single object represents something in our life. Right. So, so the way I see it is every room in the house represents an area of our life and every object within that room is doing something. And sorry, the, it's like so windy here today. It's that okay. Like there's like giant sails. We have these sails for the sun outside and they're like, like, you know, so no one is being beat outside of my house, but it's very loud. Um, so yeah, every single room represents an area of our lives. And so like the clothes, for example, is how we express ourselves. And it's also how other people see us. It's basically our image. And so a lot of times the, the, the clothes will become a bit cluttered if we feel uncertain as how we want to present ourselves, or if we're in a big process of reinventing ourselves. Sometimes it's like, we almost need a lot of clothes out because we're trying to pick and choose we're kind of crafting who we're becoming yeah. and so it's actually really interesting when we look at it like that is like wow like i'm discovering who i am now and i'm deciding how i'm going to let the world see me like what i want to show of myself in the world today yeah i don't have that much space <laughs> <laughs> totally totally i think that's a blessing sometimes though honestly paul it's like if we there's a there's a principle that says that like if you have the space you'll fill it so I don't think having more space is better. I think that having mindfulness within your space is yeah. the best possible thing. Awesome. Awesome. And like, like the only, the only reason my bed is like that is because like with the water, we weren't able to like wash clothes because the pipes froze. Like, cause I usually like have it made up like first thing when I wake up. Oh, totally. It's yeah. I feel like this year has thrown everybody for a loop, right? It's like for any number of reasons, we're all like, this is what I do, but it's not what I'm doing today. It's like, I think it's teaching us grace of how do we, how do we feel comfortable in moments of discomfort and how do we stay grounded? Are not available to us. 
you said how we stay grounded. Yeah. How do we stay grounded? And then how do we stay, you know, feeling good when the things that we normally use to ground us are not there, you know, like when, when our routines are not there. When our cell phone is not there. I know when our wireless reception is not working. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I know today it's really, I don't know what's going on. It's yeah, it's crazy today. Yeah. So like what's some clutter control advice? That is such a good question. So, so the biggest thing that you can do to manage your clutter is to not judge yourself because what happens most of the time is we see our clutter and we assume that there's something wrong with having clutter. And we assume that other people are judging us for our clutter. So what ends up happening is we have this whole shame spiral in our head and we beat ourselves up and we feel like there's something wrong with us. And right. It's like, and by the time you go to take action, you've already been beating yourself up for 10 minutes or five minutes or two minutes or whatever it is, but you go to take action and you already feel defeated. And so it's really hard to want to be in action when you feel like you failed before you began. So the first thing you can do is get curious. Well, why is this clutter here? Um, do I need more space? You know, asking yourself open-ended questions. Do I need more space? Do I really like these things? Is it, you know, am I in the middle of a project starting to just get curious? Like, well, why would it be here right now? Um, that can be the best way to start because if you start off with judgment, we're getting to nowhere fast, you know, it's, it's a really tough to come back from that. And like with clutter, like all the, all the stuff, like we can organize it better. That's a place for everything. Like how they say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, in this, there's something about the way I look at the process of organizing, it's coming home to ourselves. So the way that you want to place the objects in your home so that you can find them so that they have a home so that they belong, right? We all want to belong. We, nobody wants to feel like we don't belong or we're not wanted. And so we want to set up our spaces so that every object has belongs. But I feel like in order to have that, we also have to have that sense of belonging because we can't create anything that we're not. And so our home is, is an out picturing what's true for us. Right. So it's like anything that you're feeling inside, you're going to create on the outside myself included it's human nature, right? It's like, we, we subconsciously create externally what we feel internally. So the best thing you can do is really try to find peace within yourself because you are perfect exactly as you are. Like how you are is how you're meant to be. And you're here to inspire people and uplift. And we all are, you know, you're here to make it, I don't care if it's just the day, the day you held the door open for that one person, you reminded them that humans are nice. Like maybe that's your whole point of being right. Like you are here for something special and powerful. And if we can tap into that and feel that way, most of the time, instead of feeling like, Oh, what's wrong with me? Why do I have this clutter? What's how, you know, it changes everything. It changes everything. And because we have to start within ourselves feeling peaceful and like we belong. So like as for junk, like we can just toss like stuff that we don't need. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you know, and that's, that can be a point of torture for some people because they're like, I don't want to waste. I want it to go to the right person. And then they end up running through circles, right. To, to try to find the perfect place uh, for it to go. And you know, the truth is, it's not your job to save the world. It's really. Yeah. a new life with someone else. You know, you're giving that object a new world that it gets to explore and someone else gets that thing you didn't want. So it's really, it really is powerful. And spring cleaning, like I love, I love when it's time to spring clean, but I, I spring clean all the time. Yeah. Yeah, you do. I know. I like it too. It's, it feels, so I have a membership called the chaos to Calm membership and we basically do year round cleaning. So every month we focus on one room and we clean that room. And so, and we organize that room and it's nice because then you never have to do that really big, intense one time in the year cleaning that feels so big. You could, you know, just drop from exhaustion versus every month you're focusing on something else. And so it's actually really nice to feel like organizing is a, is a part of your self-care is a part of your maintenance and, and how you tend to your home and yourself at the same time, just like exercise or drinking water. I, I consider myself at least 20% organized. Like I, I wish other people would get on board. I'm not <laughs> saying names though. <laughs> Your secret is safe with me, Paul. Your secret <laughs> is safe. <laughs> yeah, I try to stay organized though. I feel like you're more than 20% organized. Like just, I can feel you and I don't feel like you're, 
you know, I don't know. I think, I think you, like most people are more organized than you feel. It's, it's easy yeah. to look at the TV shows or the books and feel like, Oh, that's organized. All organizing is, is having the things that you need when you need them. That's really all it is. It's, it's, and having a, the space look a way that's pleasing to you. And that is so subjective. That's different for everybody. You know, how I would want my house to feel homey would feel like someone else's version of torture. <laughs> so it's, you know, like you want your home to feel like it's your own unique fingerprint of you yeah. and then to have everything accessible when you need it and want it. So it's not a job to get it out. Yeah. I'm so organized. Like I don't lose keys. I don't lose, I know where everything is at. I don't lose phones. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. I feel the same. It's, you know, I don't know about you, but anytime I've lived alone, it always makes me so mad when I can't find something because it's just me and I'm so organized. Like it happens every time that I like lose my hairbrush. I don't know what I did with it, where, you know, it's like, and I'm like, I'm the only one here. Like you hid it from yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what did I do with it? Yeah. So it's, it's, um, but it is, it's nice to not feel like you spend a lot of time wasting time looking for your things, you know? I do that sometimes. Like I'll, I'll hide it from myself, like unknowingly. And then like, I try to recall like what was the last place yeah. <laughs> I had. It. I'll sit and like meditate, try to visualize it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's here. <laughs> and like, what, what, what is some good advice for like hardest? Like people that has like just a whole bunch of stuff on the floor, stuff like filled like boxes and all kind of stuff in a room or throughout the house, like hardest. Yeah. So, so basically, so, so if, if someone, so hoarding is more of a behavior than a, than a name, right? Like our description. So, so someone who might have hoarding disorder, you know, exactly what you're describing. Those kind of boxes pile up. It's what you're, so that is actually something that has to be clinically treated. And so you'd actually want to go and get diagnosed, you know, get diagnosed by a professional who could actually diagnose that um, because you need a lot more support than just organizing. There's a lot going on there that in order to really feel like you've come through it. Um, but when you, when you look at someone who, who has the behavior, who has a hoarding tendency, basically, um, you have to ask yourself a couple questions. Is this, you know, is this a, a hoarding tendency or is this a collection, a collection, right? Is it, are you collecting something and collections often are really kept, you know, well preserved and maintained. And if it's not kind of a collection, then you have to ask yourself, well, what's, is there a fear behind that stuff? You know, what is the fear? Are you afraid of wasting things? Are you afraid you won't have enough, you know, really getting to the root of the problem, which is what's really going on behind closed doors. And that's what I see is the biggest challenge, Paul, with family and friends when they come across someone who's who's struggling with hoarding tendencies is that they just want to judge them and they want to say, oh, you need to do things differently. Well, their brain doesn't work in the same way our brains work, right? They they have a lot of stuff and it's because their brain, you know, if I handed someone who had hoarding disorder, this pen and my phone, and I said, which is more valuable? They might have a very difficult time telling me which one was more valuable, even though the phone is drastically more valuable. Oh, yeah. Right. So, but it's just, their brain is wired differently. You know, people with hoarding disorder are some of the smartest people I've ever met hands down. Yeah. I'm, I'm not attached to items. Like I, I'm quick because to throw things just, away. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's so different. So it's just, you know, kind of getting curious and asking them like, are you comfortable with your clutter? Does this feel okay to you? Do you want any support in releasing anything, you know, yeah. being like a positive support to them? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Like, Cause like with, with Harden, like I know people get attached to items. Yes. It's so hard. You know, it's, um, it's so hard because it's often, you know, it can be rooted in a trauma. And so it's very scary to let go of stuff. Like I think of my, my great grandma and she lived through the depression and she always had a pantry overflowing with food. And my great grandfather would say, I, she she had periods where she didn't have enough. I will never tell her not to have whatever she wants. And, and so she always had more than she ever even needed, but it was because she had gone without for so long that it was terrifying to think about having to live through that again. And so that's, that can be a really common thing to be feeling fear that you won't get your needs met or have enough. And the best thing we can do is just learn to be comfortable, be present with those uncomfortable feelings. I could be an organizing coach. Yeah, I feel like you could actually. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I shy away from it though. Like I, I could help people with the organization, but like sometimes I shy away from it. Uh oh. Oh wait, say that again. I can help people with the organization uh, skills. I sometimes I shy away from it. Yeah, how come you shy away from it? I don't know. Like, 
Because I know, like, I don't know if it's, like, an age thing, like, with, uh, like, I don't know, like, the older you get, you probably, like, people, some some might want to, like, collect things, like mm -hmm. soda machines, barbecue pits, like, three barbecue pits, three limos. But it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is. It's, I always find it so interesting to see what people collect. You know, it's, you learn a lot about someone by what they choose to keep, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. If you could only keep one thing in your room, if like, it, like look around and like, if you had to leave the room right now and only take one thing with you, what would you take? My, well, I, I'll probably have a couple things. <laughs> Do it. So what would it be? <laughs> uh, my laptop, my phone and my journal and pen. Oh, I like that. That's well, what I keeps me together. Oh, I love it. I would take my my poetry journal and because I love writing poetry and none of it's typed up yet. So I'd want to take my poetry journal and I would want to take. Hmm, oh, I would take this. I would take this. I have this shark tooth, this Megalodon shark tooth, and I would oh. take that. I'll I'll take the Sapsuma <laughs> that I got <laughs> that I got over there. <laughs> it's coming with you. <laughs> Have you ever gotten rid of something you wish you hadn't? Oh, uh, one time I I gave away a file cabinet. Like I was I was trying to um put it into a garage sale, but then my dad told me to keep it, and I gave it to them. And then you know now I was outside, <laughs> it's still outside, like just putting uh like gloves in there and uh, lighter fluid and stuff, outside stuff that put it in there. Well, they using it for something though. Yeah. How funny. I pay like 90 something dollars for it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's so, it's hard to watch the things that used to be ours, like in another place. You yeah. know, I had, um, I moved and I gave a lot of my stuff to my friend and her house now looks like my house because she has so much of my stuff. And it's every time I walk into her house, I feel like I'm walking into my house. It's like so startling to me. I'm like, that's my couch. That's my statue. That's, you know, it's like, it takes me a second. <laughs> yeah. So what else, what else you got coming up? Like what else are, are your inspirations? Oh, so much. I mean, so so I feel like one of the things that I'm, I'm tracking right now is, you know, and I think it's because everybody's been home and alone and feeling isolated. And, and so what I have done, so like I mentioned that I have the organizing membership and that's been incredible because it's like having this group to work on clutter with, because you're not alone. You know, it's like, it's so clutter, so isolating and it feels like it's so shameful, but the truth is you're not alone. There's thousands of other people who are struggling with the same challenges. Right. So that's the beauty of this membership. And then what I've what I came up with in the last, like in the last six months was something called the organizing playground. And it's basically, we all get together and we do group organizing sessions. And it's amazing. Like this is, I, people are making huge shifts that I've never seen anything like it before. Like people are having huge revelations and changing their lives just by coming together and organizing because it's so isolating to organize alone and so stressful. And yet when you do it in the comfort of a group, you have accountability, you have focus, you have, you know, Know, camaraderie camaraderie and inspiration so that's what i'm most excited about is the organizing playground right now and and the organizing membership because i feel like those two things are just helping people set themselves free every single day it's so cool one thing i like about organizing is like when you organize it your mind is also in order like just organizing your space totally it's so true it's yeah it's so true it's the more that our, the more our mind is organized, the easier it is to be organized physically. And, and also the more we're organized physically, the easier it is to keep a clear mind. And so they do affect each other. And so it's like, if you're feeling chaotic in your mind, organize your space. If you're feeling chaotic in your space, you know, like take a second to do some planning and organize your mind. You know, it's like you can work both ways, which is really fun. Okay. And you say you do poetry? I do. Yeah. What do you write about? you know, whatever I feel inspired by, I do impromptu poetry. So I, I have this group that I go with and, um, they read a poem and then we take a, a line from the poem and write our own poetry. So sometimes I feel like I'm channeling. I'll write about, um, yeah, I'll write about spiritual stuff. I'll write about be, big growth. There was like one poem I found where I was writing about an orange peel. It was so funny. It was like this hilarious, hilarious poem where I'm writing about. And I remember the day I was peeling an orange and it wouldn't come off like the, 
the peel wouldn't leave the orange. And I wrote, and I had to stop and write this whole poem about how this orange didn't want to leave its skin. And like, was it because it did like stayed on the too long and it didn't, it was attached to it or is it because it wasn't done growing yet? And it was like, like all philosophical about the orange peel. So yeah, deep um, thought. Totally deep thoughts about my food. Exactly. <laughs> Using deep thought. <laughs> big time, big time. But I, I mean, I love poetry. It feels like, like a part of my soul gets heard when I write poetry. Yes. Do you write? Yeah, I do. Uh, creativity. It's creativity. Because mm-hmm. like I, I write songs, I, I document, I journal, and I do podcasting. But I also I do a lot of things. Like I'm an author, and I'm a massage therapy graduate, and a radio broadcasting student now. Wow, you do a lot. You are busy. Yeah, so busy. <laughs> That's great. It means your mind is very interesting and full. Yeah, I'm creative. I'm creative with words. Just like like how you do poetry. Like I can I can write songs like that. Oh wow. What a gift. Do you do the do you do the music also? I don't I don't make instrumentals. I don't play a guitar. I don't play an instrument, but I, I just vocalize. Like I rap or sing. Sometimes I sing. Like I, I made a, a video today. I don't know if you checked it out. No, when did you do it? Right before? Yeah, like three hours ago. Like I oh. I forgot what I called it, but it's it's um it's a cover to let me check, let me check real quick. Awesome. The title. Just the two of us cover and break the change remix. Hmm, just the two of us? Yeah, just the two of us. I was singing it. <laughs> solo I love that. i'll have to check it out is it on your facebook page <laughs> it's it's yeah it's on my it's on my uh on my timeline and also on on youtube for awesome. the mc the mc nook uh channel like just the two of us and break the change by lupe fiasco oh cool i i, I wrote my own lyrics to the break the change part and i had the beat yeah. but the, the first one i didn't have the beat but i was just singing and i had the uh the a reference track in the background you can almost hear like the other man singing like the mm-hmm. the original, yeah. And, but it's 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 very subtle that you can't really hear them. But like wow. you, you hear me singing and like you can't. It's no beat. I, I took I took it. the beat off. Oh, I love that you're so creative. That's beautiful. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool though. Like I have my own lyrics in the second part, but like yeah. just hearing me say like just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> like I was That's singing awesome. that I was singing that uh on the song. Wow, how fun! Yeah, I'm. I would love to sing, but I get so scared to sing because I have a really high voice range. I have like the kind of voice range that would break a glass. Like, so it's not like you can do anything fun with that. Like I can't go to like karaoke and sing easily. <laughs> like, I feel like my voice is like, I should have been in the opera, you know? Yeah. You break a window. Like pretty much. Voice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So what else you like about music? Like. I mean, music, it's just, I mean, I feel like it transports you to a moment of an experience. You know, it's like those moments where we hear a song and we just like either the, the beat hits it is in a certain way that we feel in our body, or it reminds us of someone or something like, I mean, there's been so many times over the years where a song will play. And I just feel like it's like the, you know, the story of my life. And I just listen to it over and over and over again because I can like feel it in my body, you know? Those lyrics. Yes. And just even how the music comes in and there's still some songs that like I'll change if other people are around because they're so personal to me. Like, I don't want to have that experience around other people. It's like, no, 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 this is my private moment. Go away. (laughs) Like, (laughs) like, because they are, they're just, it's, it's so powerful how they feel like they're speaking to your soul. Yeah. You, you spoke about like the spiritual side of organizing, like, yeah. like what, what other stuff you, you, uh, you get into in with business wise. Yeah. So I do. So, you know, there's a lot that's layered in. So like I said earlier, talking about like the different rooms of our home and how they all mean something different, but also like items have energy. So there's the energy that we put into them. There's the energy when they're made, there's the energy of the materials that they're made of. There's maybe if someone else owned this, their energy, you know, so sometimes when I'm working with people, I'll actually be channeling spirit. Like I'll actually, it kind of becomes like a, like a medium ship oh. <laughs> circle. Like suddenly I'm like, your mom is here and she wants me to tell you that <laughs> it's, like, it's a really, it's a really interesting thing to wow. see what comes out of physical stuff, you know? 
Wow. So what would you, what would you, you describe yourself like, like a professional organizer and like when it comes to the spiritual side, what would you call that? Yeah, I know. It's like, like, um, I, I think I'd say like a spiritual organizer or that's when the clutter whisper would also be good. So either a clutter whisper, spiritual organizer, it's one of those things where like, I wouldn't want to sit and do psychic readings all day. That would not be my jam at all. But like, but I love when it comes through, it's almost like, I don't always get to decide when it comes through, but suddenly it's just so clear what's happening. So yeah. I just allow it to happen. Um, but I would never want to scare anyone off because I can do sessions and never do that. You know, I don't want to freak <laughs> anyone out, but also it's a really cool thing to have come up because some people need to have that spiritual confirmation to feel like they can move on or to feel like they can let something go or to feel like, um, they've made the right decision. And so it can be really helpful to have that spiritual awareness. Also, you say you don't want to freak no one out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's too late, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, uh, intuition, like that intuition, like I, I totally get it. Like the intuition about like where things come from and like, why is it like the way it is? Like what happened to you for you to for you to have clutter? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the, the truth is that like. You know, the clutter is a friend. The clutter is here to help us. And so if we get still and we try to listen to the vibes of, of the objects, it will actually give us a lot of information of how we change our lives for the better. And that's, in my mind, one of the most important things we can do is to go slow enough and to be aware enough to notice what feels good to us and bad to us and act accordingly instead of just rushing through and saying, oh, I got it done. Instead, allow it to open you up and, and help you become even more strongly who you were meant to be in this life. And it's productive too, to be organized. I like to go through my files sometimes, like and yeah. just look through all my papers, throw away what I don't need, keep what I want, throw away what I don't need. It's called quality control. Oh, I, oh, I love that. Oh, Paul, that's so great. I love quality control. It's yeah, giving it like a once over, just yes, thank you and no. Yeah, because like you don't want to have like we don't have that much space to pile up a lot of stuff like and like we don't have all that. It's just some of the stuff is trash. Like you throw away what you don't need. <laughs> keep what you want. Totally. Totally. <laughs> I learned that from a book. It's called How to Wait, How to Rap the Art and Science of a Hip Hop MC. <laughs> really? Yeah, they was talking about like quality control, like with, when it comes to music and like I, I use that even in my organizer skills. I don't have like a whole yeah, bunch of journals. Yeah, I think of there's a term in writing that they call that they say kill your darlings. And what it means is like when you're writing something and I feel this way with my poetry too, I'm writing and it feels so precious to me. And yet when you go to turn something into a publisher or write it into a blog or put it into a song, you have to kind of kill some of the things, the lines that you really love, but that don't fit, you know, to, to make it in the right amount of time or to make it tell the story right. And so it's, it always is so tough. I feel like I have so many word documents filled with, with phrases that I never used. <laughs> and it's so hard to make those choices because they're, there are babies, but I love that idea of quality control because you are, you're creating a quality experience and it sometimes means you know sacrificing other things but you're creating quality yes yes and like what else you got coming up <laughs> sorry paul i feel like my wi-fi is really bad today i think it might be the um the the wind we're we have a lot of wind today how do we organize time oh <laughs> <laughs> Do we have another eight hours? Um, so time is, is elusive. Um, time doesn't exist. So that's, we'll start there. Time is a human construct. So there's no way to organize time. What we can do is we can choose what is important to us to take action on first. Like oftentimes what we're doing with our time management is we're addressing whatever is urgent to someone else and not addressing what's urgent to us. And so the most important thing you can do is know your priorities and have not not many priorities, right? I always say to people only have three to five priorities at a time because you have more than that. And it's very hard to make progress in any way. So having three to five priorities and then really picking what are the actionable things that I want to do and making sure that you're taking action on those before you look on your email, before you go into social media, before you answer that phone call, because the whole rest of the world has a lot of ideas of what you should be doing with your
Yeah, just tracking time, like tracking, like recording, like keeping a record of like, like time keeping, like of, of what you're doing with your energy and, and time. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times I'll just even write down, I have like a dry erase desk and I'll write down how long I think something will take. I'll go to say, oh, I'm going to write a blog post and I'll think it's going to take an hour. And then I write an hour and then I time myself and I see, was I right? And if I wasn't right, then I know better for next time. Oh, it only took me 45 minutes or no, it took me an hour and a half. So you're, you, it's like, we're training. It's like being an athlete and training, you're getting better and sharper about what you're doing, how long it takes to do it. So that when you plan your time, you are more accurate versus not realizing it takes you an hour and a half to do something. So yeah. it just makes you stronger, more powerful and more capable in every part of your life. Uh, that's, that's the best advice. Like, like what you're saying about like clutter and, and about organizing, like that's, that's the best advice when you, when you're saying about like timekeeping mm. and not having a lot on, not having, like, I know like some people they'll have, they'll get stuff on your schedules, like and you, you don't have time for yourself. Like, so that's, that's also good. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. It's yeah. I mean, putting yourself first is the most important thing because it's only, you know, what you need and only, you know, what's good for you. Everybody else has their own ideas. Yeah. We're so creative that, that we get tied into all kinds of stuff and like, we just got none but tests. It's true. <laughs> it's so true. Like sometimes like I'll have like two pages front and back like just like writing like a to-do list like but if i do like five like how you said like that's great like yeah to us. you will be like so powerful with how you spend your time with that awareness it's you know and you you were already already so sharp right so it's like you already have that sharpness and then it's just about like making it even more finely tuned and then yeah. it's nothing will nothing will get in your way when you're that that sharp it takes a team though it takes a team <laughs> It's true. But sometimes the team is like, like you said, your notebook or it's your planner or it's your phone or your email. Like those are our teammates. Also, there are things that help our lives go better and more easy. Um, you know, if you tried to remember everything you needed to do in your mind, you would just be, I mean, your poor brain would be exhausted, you know, after, after a full day. Yeah. yeah. Like that's why I save time when I do read journals, like, cause I'll be thinking so much, like it'd be overwhelming and racing thoughts just from reading so much and like taking all that in, like it's, it's overwhelming, like overload. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so good. You know that about yourself. It's so helpful. Yeah. So what else you want to talk about? Oh my gosh. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Hmm. What is, okay. So let's see. What is, what is the most interesting object you've ever seen in your life? Like what is an object that either you owned or someone else owned that you just like could never get out of your mind? Oh, uh, my ex-girlfriend, she had like some, some, some shoes. Like it was, a, it was like bear, it was like bear shoes. Like you put it in, it's comfortable shoes. Like, oh, like bear? Bear feet. Like it's <laughs> shoes though. It's like shoes though. Like it's, it's fuzzy. Did you get to wear them? Did she let you wear them? Yeah, she let me wear them. Oh, that's nice. When you <laughs> broke up, did you say, can I have them? No. <laughs> I got to return that jacket, though. Really? <laughs> it takes time with breakups, doesn't it? Yeah. I would say, when you break up, do a sweep of the house. Like, walk through your whole house and collect everything from them. All the pictures, all the love letters. Put that stuff into a box so that you don't accidentally run across it. Because it's so easy, right? To be like, oh, I have your stuff. And then you're suddenly, you're like back into this like level of intrigue with them where it's just it's nice to give yourself the fresh start i return everything though i return the phone i return uh what everything. else um the microphone all that <laughs> yeah oh because like we, we just was together for like what three months and then uh like i seen that she had a dark side but like she was cool for the most part but like yeah. like how she was talking to me one day like i was like uh no i don't want to deal with this Good for you. Good for you. I know it's, you know, everybody has that, that side that's challenging, right? It's just, but you want to find somebody who's willing to work with you. And that's, I mean, I feel like one of my favorite books in the world is a book called getting the love you want. And it's about dealing with the dark side. It's about when you come across those triggering feelings with another person and how you manage them. And it's, to me, it takes the complication of relationships and simplifies it. Like it takes the thing that feels so unworkable and makes it a manageable process. And it's a, you know, it can be a tricky thing to confront, but it's so helpful because 
the truth is, you know, anyone on the planet could be your best friend or worst nightmare. They're the same person, right? Someone on the planet loves me and thinks I'm the best person in the world. And someone else thinks I'm awful. And it, I can't control that. I can't control that how someone feels about me. And truthfully, it's honestly none of my business and it's not even about me. It's about them. And so it's so really like learning that what you want is I want a partner who I can grow with and evolve with, because if nothing else, that's what a relationship is all about. It's just this growth process. If this podcast episode was a, um, a test, like an awesome test, you would pass it. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Band quality control. I would be maintained. Yeah. <laughs> My wife, I could be fired, but I could be maintained. <laughs> so like, with, like with, what else are you doing like with organizing? Like, Ooh, so much. So I'm working on a new class right now that I love. I'm, I mean, it's actually mind blowing that I haven't done this class before, to be honest with you, Paul. Like, so this is, it's, it's a class about the spiritual meaning of stuff because every, like I said, every room represents an area of our life, but it also represents a chakra, like a chakra in our energy field. And, and basically what that knowledge does is it opens us up to how we can take control of our life in the most powerful sense, like to be able to know and decode what is really happening in your life without letting the wool be pulled over your eyes, because it's so easy to get busy and just be like, I don't have time to do this. I don't like, there's always a, there's always a message hiding in your mess. Yeah. And when we can decode that you can set yourself free. So right now I'm working on that right now, it's going to launch in April. And that is just like, I'm so excited. You know, you're doing the thing you're supposed to do when you like are excited about something as nerdy as organizing. <laughs> I don't know many people who feel that way. That's my language. When you talk about like, like chakras, like that's my language. I went to school for massage therapy. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I, I do, I love, I love the connection. And when I was discovering this, you know, over the past few years, it was really cool. And then what, it, what that knowledge did is it took an area that seems really benign, like an area that seems like it doesn't mean anything. The entryway is a perfect example of this. The entryway in your front yard. Most people don't think about the entryway or their front yard when they organize a space, right? It's like, that's an afterthought for most people. Oh, it's fine. They think, oh no, I've got a decorator garden or whatever. But the truth is that the entryway is the way that you receive people from the outside world and how you go and send yourself out into the world. And when you know that about yourself, it becomes so powerful. And when you're digging into the third eye and you're digging into, you know, this insight and awareness and not so superficial and starts being this life transforming process where you can say, oh no, that's not how I want to deal with my life. That's not how I want to live my life. And it really does shift how you do everything by being able to look at things with a new, with a new light. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Just, do you have a favorite chakra? Uh, I got like about three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Which ones are your favorite? Uh, I like the throat chakra. Mm -hmm. I like, um, what else? The mind chakra. And I mm -hmm. like the, uh, the crown chakra. The crown chakra. Yeah. I love that. The spiritual connectedness of the crown and the third eye. Like the heart. Those. Yeah. And even the power chakra, right? It's like your solar plexus chakra, like that. You need them yeah. all. I know, right? We need them. I try to do a meditation every day where I just touch base with each one. I just yeah. try to make contact with each one so that I know that they're all up and online and working and flowing. I just want like the whole energy field in my body to be healthy. And I know and how to do that. Yeah. That's yeah awesome. I do like a chakra scan. It's like, I'll, I'll pray for like 45 minutes. Then I'll do like, I created, I don't know if I created this myself, but like I sometimes like I'll do like after I pray, like I'll do a chakra scan, like I'll yeah. just do like that and just go over the chakras. And like, if I feel heat, like it tells me like what's in that area, like, and I meditate on like what's going on in the body. Oh, I love that. And then I'll do a log. I'll do a prayer log after, like I'll do a chakra man on the paper. Mm -hmm. Like I'll put the chakras and like I draw a man, it's a chakra man. And then I'll just, I'll just like document next to it. Like you're like a doctor, you're a chakra doctor. Yeah, like you know, our doctors and medical people, they they have like soap charts. They have like all these charts, and like, like it's just like that. Like, just totally paying attention to like what's going on in your life when it relates to the chakras. Yeah, that's what I do with the spaces, right? I just pay attention to what 
what the different areas are showing me. You know, I think of open space feels like light, bright, you know, like easeful energy and the dense cluttered spaces feel a little bit heavier and just like a little more weighty. And so, yeah, kind of like what you're describing with your, with your chakra man, it's the same thing with the space where you look around and you feel out where does the energy feel really heavy and dense and where does it feel light and open? And yeah, I'll burn sage, burn some Palo Santo. Just oh yeah. I got everything over there. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'm obsessed with, um, Oh my gosh. You said you got everything over there. <laughs> I do. Yeah. It's all right over there. Um, Oh my gosh, but I can't, there's one. Oh, Copal is my favorite. I, I didn't discover Copal until a few years ago and it's sap from a tree in New Mexico. And it just, uh, when I smell it, my whole body just relaxes like three okay. inches down. It's, it's such a, I don't know. I don't know why I'm obsessed with it. It's so it's delicious and lemongrass. Mm, so nice. You love sage. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do you, how often do you sage your place? Not all the time. Cause like, like I live with my parents. So like, sometimes I don't like the smell. They say it smell like, like, uh, like cannabis flower. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. You're like, it's not, it's not. It's sage. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's helping the energy. It's fine. It's cleansing the space. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. So what else about the chakras? Like mm -hmm. I was, I was, I was thinking about that. I had something in mind, but I forgot what I was going to say, like about the chakras. Yeah. Like, like we're as unique as we are, like we're like, we're, we're really powerful beings and yeah. Like when it comes to the chakras, like we're connected to something like so like when we meditate on that, like we know what we're connected to, like and we're connected to a lot of stuff like in the universe. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, and, and it also makes me think of right how we do anything is how we do everything. And so being aware that our body ties into our space around us, ties into the energy around us, ties into the things that we're creating. It's so powerful. I mean, it really it really is a gift to be able to see our physical spaces and our bodies with that holistic understanding where it's, you know, because once you know what zone you're in, right? Like if you, if you know that you're in, you know, the crown chakra, you might have a, a mantra, right? You might be able to choose a mantra that feels a little, a little bit more connecting for you. Um, maybe it's, maybe the mantra is I understand, or I am connected, or I am one with all all this. Once you know where the block is, then you can start expanding a little bit more energy into it. If it's, um, if it's your root chakra, um, maybe it's feeling that need for survival. Like you could always come back to a mantra. I am grounded, or I always have enough. My needs are always met. And just knowing where the block is, you can start to create a wellness plan with your mind just by as simple as with, with directing your thoughts. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. So any social links you want to plug in or any oh. things you want to, to how, how you want to wrap up? Yeah. So, so for sure. So you, you all can find me on my website at starhanson.com and the membership is at turn chaos to calm.com. And that's the organizing the chaos, the chaos to calm organizing membership. Um, and then my social, you know, you can find me on Facebook really easily. And also on Instagram at star.hanson. And yeah, I share all my classes on there. I do a free class every single month. I do organizing challenges. We do group organizing sessions. It is just a blast. So um, I would be overjoyed to connect with any of your listeners. Anything you want to share before we go? I didn't want to cut, up, cut you off too soon. Or No, I just want to say thank you so much for having me, Paul. It has been an absolute treat to talk to you. I'm so grateful to have this conversation. And thank you for all the beautiful work that you're doing in the world. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Like it was, it was a great, it was a joy to talk to you and like, it was a, engaging and fun. Like I, I love uh, that we had a conversation we got on the podcast to, to talk about organizing. Me too. Me too. Thank you so much. We had a blast though. Like, yeah, we you. did. <laughs> <laughs> and for more episodes, like every Friday at 1 PM us central time, you can check out free time, free spill. It's on all platforms like Google podcasts, Apple Podcasts, you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. I got a YouTube channel uh, for a free time, free spill. Thank you. Thank you, Star. Thank you so much, Paul. All right.